Okay, hi. Um, June 13th, 2019, Happy Dog Farm, NC Farm Report. Um, I have a new camera. You can see the clarity. Pay no attention to what's behind me. It's a combination of being an electrical engineer, agriculture, and graduate student. I will promise to clean it up, Mom. I'm sorry. I have a new microphone, so hopefully the sound quality is way better than before. It really couldn't have gotten much worse. I apologize for that. And I want to give you the farm report, some things that have come up and I think are of interest to you. So I'm going to drag my head out of the way a wee bit. And first of all, I want to talk about field crop news from Penn State University. Um, I really recommend that you look into this. It's a, it's a fabulous resource. Um, this year's uh, this week's notice caught my eye, potato leaf hopper. Now, they're talking specifically about alfalfa. Um, I'm not really interested in alfalfa. I'm just interested in the potato, potato leaf hopper, and I'm going to show you why. Um, when you follow that link to your browser, it says, be on the lookout. It's in Pennsylvania now. It does not overwinter in Pennsylvania. It comes up from southern states, and that is a problem because you really can't kill it and make it go away, you have to just wait for it to come back. Um, what's, you see it, uh, on the image here, there's a nymph and there's an adult, and they suck from the leaves and the tender shoots of the plants. And in part of that drawing off of nutrients, um, which is def definitely damaging, sucking the life out of your plant, they leave behind a toxin, which causes hopper burn. So the plant is really is damaged. It's physically damaged in the, the vampire effect going on here. If you keep reading, and I'm just going to hit the four because I did that page already. Oh, okay, here it comes. They talk about its life cycle. They talk about how it gets here. Um, but in apple, it's also a problem. This is alfalfa, but you can see the damage that's been done to the stand of alfalfa. It's really stunted. It's really hurt it. And if you have young apple trees, it will definitely hurt it. Now, it doesn't like hairy leaves and plants. Those are the trichomes, those little hairs that you see in a microscope. It doesn't like those. It doesn't like to navigate over them. You can't put more hair on an apple tree, but what you can do is put on surround. Surround will help to repel some pests like this, at least from the plant that you got wet with the surround, okay? I'm going to be putting seven or uh, carbaryl in my tank along with the sur uh, surround to try and knock down anybody who's in the neighborhood. Um, what surround does for you is it does give a surface that most of these critters don't like. And the other part of it is as you do get new growth coming out, you're going to see bright green shoots emerging from the white plant. The white does no harm whatsoever to the photosynthesis of the plant, and it can breathe just fine. But what it does do is it does repel or make an uncomfortable environment for insects to live on. It takes a lot of water. It takes some good pressure and a lot of ag continuous agitation to apply it. Don't try to apply it with oil as a sticker agent because you're actually defeating the uh, clay's capability. It's not inexpensive. It's getting more expensive, but it is a good solution. I don't know how many rainfalls it will take, and that is one of its downfalls, is rain will wash it off. Unlike other pesticides, at least you can see it's being washed off. Uh, other pesticides you don't know. You just figure it's getting washed off. So surround is fine. It is harmless within reason. You can handle it. It's not a big deal. If you look in cosmetics, you look in a lot of products, it's already there as kaolin clay. But this has been specially ground to give it this real fine, almost talc-like texture, which makes it effective. So if you, you're worried about potato leaf offer, you're looking for an organic solution, I'm going to point towards surround. If you're not concerned about organic, you do not have any blossoms in or around your orchard. That means in the understory, no dandelions, nothing. A neonic will kill any sucking pests. And you only need like one application at the half rate per year, I'm told. I am surrounded by beehives. And I returned 
the Neo Nick that I bought just because I was just too afraid of having uh, ethical and neighborly run-ins. I just decided not to fight the fight this year. Uh, I will no doubt have hopper burn issues, and I'm miffed. Um, it would have been much easier and much less expensive to use the Neo Nick than do multiple applications of surround. If you're using surround in a tank sprayer, you want to use a T Jet 6510-6510 jet. It's a very large opening. Do not put a t remove the filter from the tip. Remove the filter from the pump. They will clog. They will clog. And make sure you do the right water to surround mix. Remember, always start with your tank one half to two thirds filled with water. And then you start slowly putting in the powder while you're agitating the tank to keep it circulating and keep it suspended. It will come out of suspension if you don't keep it going. 6510 is the smallest for a wand sprayer. I have no idea how you would use this in an air blast. Uh, a 6508 to 6506 will start clogging and it just will not lay it on like you want it to. The way, think about it, you are spray painting your trees, okay? And you just want to get it on there and keep rolling on by. So that's surround. That's what I recommend for dealing with this pest. <clears throat> Folks have asked me for web resources, and I'm going to offer up two that I happen to like. This is Washington State University's Rootstocks for Apple page. It's nice. I like it. Is it the ones all fits all? No. It's really good, though. It's a great start. Um, you have relative tree size comparing Geneva and Malling rootstocks, which is great. And then as you go down, you get descriptors and you can pick the one you want. So let's say M26. Many people like that one. Semidorfing. If I recall, it's a freestanding. It tells you how it was crossed. It was made at the East Malling Research Institute. A little history. Um, and they talk about the image of the Emla rootstock, which are virus-free as opposed to straight malling. Um, good productivity, low soil. It needs well-drained soil. That's why I can't use it because my soil is anything but well-drained. But the, all this stuff, it's right in one spot. I will put the link in the description. The next website, the other website, it's not academic. It's commercial, but I really like this. Um, it is orangepippin.com. And it's really a fabulous one for if you're looking up um, fruit varieties and you want to know about its use, its origins, um, possibly does it what resistance to scab and other diseases it has. This is a good place to start. It's a nice one. It's certainly nice if you're just looking at new trees because you want a better apple pie. Christ to go. I put in Cox Orange Pippin, which is a great hand fruit, uh, fresh market variety that's in the UK. I've tasted them. They're better than a lot of things we have here. A friend of mine has a tree, so I'm just going to try and take cyan off his tree and grow some of my own. Otherwise, I'll just eat his apples. Um, I just did a click and a search, and I'm hoping it's going to come up. Okay, I'll hit forward, go back where we were. Here it is. It's reviews, tree register, fruit ID, photos, references, there's, there's just a lot of good information on this website. And again, this is orangepippin.com. It's a, a good place to do research if you're looking for new varieties or to recommend a variety to somebody else. Anyway, he scrolls up, he scrolls over, he gets back in the frame. I hope that as clumsy as I am, you appreciate the effort. I'm getting better sound. I'm getting a better picture. Um, I did take my camera out into the orchard. You can see some of my fumbling attempts I've put up there to help get started, to get familiar with the equipment and a new way of producing videos for you. Uh, I will be doing one on regulatory issues, one on the federal side of the house that if you have a small cider mill or you have an orchard where you are selling fruit to the public, um, you need to register with the FDA. Um, it's sort of like getting a driver's license. It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't really obligate you to anything. You just have to be on their radar. For me, my cider mill is a food processing facility. Um, I have to be on there. Now, I was told by Department of Agriculture here in Pennsylvania, well, we need to see your FSMA plan, all this other stuff. And I'm like, well, 
and I found out there is a form, I'll talk about that, where if you're doing $10,000 or less in sales a year, you're exempted, you're considered a um, qualified facility, something like that, I'll get right, you do not, you're not subject to FISMA. You are still subject to good agricultural practices and you are still subject to uh, sanitation requirements for what you do, but you are not under the full burden of FISMA. And the big one there has been water testing, okay? So you have a lot more involved. They just realized if you're not doing $10,000 of sales a year, having the full burden of FISMA on you would probably keep you from ever getting out of the gates. So it gives you a lot more elbow room to get started as a small community um, like a cider mill or the like. And if you don't want to do more than that, you stay that. It's good for two years. Every two years you renew it. You stay on board with the FDA. You just go, I'm here. You stay on board with your Department of Agriculture. I pay $35 a year to be inspected. I'm okay. So we'll talk some more about that. I want all of you to know the law, to know the landscape, and know what to ask in your state, in your place, so you can make intelligent decisions in staying on the good side of the regulators, who are typically well-meaning people who do not want you poisoning other people. So I hope you get that. All right. So um, I will try and stop this now. I wish you a good evening. Uh, Positive feedback is always appreciated. I've been getting good feedback. I've been getting requests for content. Keep it up. Please remember www.happydogfarm.com. And uh, there's a link to my email address there. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.